welcome back to DXB Today. So excited about our next guest because we are joined by Regional Director of Tough Mudder in the Middle East, Mr. Duncan Dews. Welcome to DXB Today. How are you? Good and you. Thank you yeah. for having me, Katie. Ferris, nice to meet you all. Wow. Duncan, I'm absolutely destroyed today. Okay. I was at Tough Mudder Fajera on <laughs> Saturday and I didn't even do the full 5K course. I did like a couple of the obstacles and that was it. I was done. Hang on, hang on. For those that don't know what Tough Mudder is, <laughs> tell us, because Ferris is making it out to be something really bad. Well, so, so Tough Mudder is, uh, is an obstacle course racing brand. Uh, we are one of the two largest brands globally. Um, we've been around since 2016 in the Middle East. Um, with pretty steady growth. Um, we are now doing, for this season, we'll do um, eight events in the region. And um, yeah, so it, it's a, positioned as a challenge. You know, so the whole idea is to get out there. We don't time the events, so it's, you know, you're not gonna go and compete to get on a podium. The whole idea is to go face your fears, whatever they may be. Katie, we were speaking about this earlier. Is it electricity you're scared of? <laughs> yeah. Is it heights? Is it claustrophobia? Yeah. Whatever it is. I was going to say, it. Duncan, because you're saying, oh, Francis, make it sound really bad. You get electrocuted, uh, jump in ice water. Yeah, I remember that. Climbing up stuff, climbing up walls. There's quite a lot of mud. And you have an interesting story about the mud, don't you? I do, yes. Yeah, actually, uh, <laughs> when we started the business, um, it was actually our most common complaint. It was, uh, you guys don't have enough mud. And we. <laughs> We experimented, we actually, believe it or not, we found a recipe online for mud. <laughs> there is a, you know, you'd think it's pretty simple, sand Dirt and water. water. And, uh, and we found a recipe that said you should mix uh, flour and food coloring, water, and we, we presented this to the global team and they were like, no. Uh, no, that's yeah, a cake. I'm not We're not going to do that. <laughs> what if somebody has a, a gluten aller allergy? <laughs> so, Duncan, uh, I've got a question. With regards to the obstacles, yeah. uh, each event across the region that you have, are the same obstacles or do you mix it up? No, so we've got a couple of yeah. signature ob obstacles. Ferris has mentioned a couple of them. Uh, the electroshock therapy is a favourite, but then we do mix it up. For so whom? No, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> then you it's Ferris. A <laughs> <laughs> like, right. it's, a, it's a favorite for the social media team. <laughs> Gives us great content. Uh, um, yeah, but we do try and mix it up. And we also like to use the geography. Um, this past weekend in Fajira has got quite a, had quite a lot of elevation. Um, so we use the elevation. There is also, uh, there was a 300 meter tunnel, uh, which is uh, a stormwater drain that we decided to utilize. In Fajira oh, wow. to rack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so we like to use the geography, you know, we, we like, you know, we've got a lot of uh, loyal um, participants who come and... Uh, what are they um, called? They are called... I don't you actually probably know. probably can't say, <laughs> <laughs> I imagine. But They're called legionnaires, we call oh, them legionnaires. It's safe, it's safe. But you try to catch me up. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying geography, how do you choose, because you've got different venues. Yeah. How do you choose the right venue for your, for your events? Um, so it's actually an interesting process. Uh, I'm not involved in it as much as I used to be, but we, we start uh, just r literally looking on Google Maps. Oh. You know, so we look for you know elevation. We look for anything that looks a bit green um, uh, and has good access. Uh, and then we get a team that will go down, um, on, sometimes on bicycles, sometimes on foot, and they go and check it out, uh, plan the route, and uh, and that's kind of how it's born. I mean, great question, Louis. You know, we want to know about the venues and how they choose them. Who chooses the obstacles? <laughs> right? Who in their right mind is sitting there going, I know what I want to do, electrocute some people this weekend. Like genuinely, who's so, coming up with this? So, so there are th three of us uh, who are the shareholders in the business and it's a really in interesting conversation. Uh, and I can tell you that there was once a conversation and, and this is not a joke, we were talking about using live crocodiles in a in, oh my in an goodness. obstacle, I'm done. Um, I'm and done. Uh, we actually it, it was uh, it was uh, in going to be in Dubai, and we'd actually spoken to the Dubai Sports Council at the time to say, "How do you feel about this?" And they were like, "Great, we can get them for you." So the idea was to put them in a tank next to water that people were going to go through with perspex. Um, uh, that, that, that idea eventually got uh, cancelled, but, uh, but it's like it's these interesting conversations we have internally and, and sometimes they start out really out there and, and then get kind there of... There should be like a Halloween version. While they're making mud. I'm definitely looking forward to the next one uh, because, of course, we had the Tough Mudder in Fujairah, we had one in Ras Al Khaimah, and they fetched around uh, 2,000 participants each. That's correct. But I know yeah. you've got a huge one coming to Dubai. Can you tell us a little bit more about what we can expect in November? Yes, yeah, so, so Dubai, this year in Dubai is going to be a two-day event on the 11th and 12th of November. Uh, we've got a pretty ambitious target of 10,000 people. Um, we are a hero event on week three of the Dubai 3030, who we've partnered with in the past. Um, 
we invest in quite a lot of money in our corporate and uh, schools outreach programs. Um, you know, getting people down as part of a team building program. Um, we, like I said, we're speaking to a lot of the, the school groups, you know, to come in, come down, bring kids down. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to that and it's, it's an absolutely amazing venue. Smack What's bang. the venue? Jebelali Racecourse. Have you thought about doing an indoor Tough Mudder, mm. perhaps at the Coca-Cola so, Arena? So that's actually an interesting story because Mark and I have, have flirted with the idea before um, not, of not a Tough Mudder, but to do something indoors. Yep. An um, inflatable Tough Mudder. It was an, yeah, it was yep. a, an inflatable obstacle course. Uh, it was one of those blue sky chats, yep. Yep. Um, but something we'd, we'd love to, uh, to revisit with you we guys. We cannot you know? wait for that exclusive, you know? I'll tell you that. But do you know what? It is interesting. I've done a lot of these obstacle courses in, in Dubai, these obstacle races. During it, I'm thinking, what am I doing? This is like one of the worst decisions I've ever made. But you kind of cross the line with your friends and your compatriots that you've kind of found along the way. And then you're like, when do I sign up for the next one? I know, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, the thing I'd like to say is, you know, um, just listening to Mark chatting earlier, you know, we spoil for choice in, in Dubai. We've got incredible restaurants, we've got incredible events, um, but there needs to be some balance for outdoor events and outdoor activity. You know, it's a, it's a super rewarding thing you know, getting active, being out with your mates for the day, and, and hopefully we can provide that, uh, you know, that option for people. So we're putting in a team for DXP today Let's then, do guys? it. Yeah. Louis? I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it was a condition of me coming for the interview. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Louis is going to be our no star No one told player. us that. <laughs> <laughs> you already signed. You're just going to throw me off. <laughs> Duncan, thank you for coming. Yeah, um, thanks for having thank me. Thank you also for my experience on Saturday. Uh, I do really appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> and we can't wait to see you before the next one. Thank you very much. Thanks All right. Thanks, thank so one of the biggest events that happened in the season, we are talking about the Manchester City treble trophy, of course. The tour took a quick stop in Dubai and we caught up with former City player. We are talking about Julian Lescott. Let's hear what he had to say. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. Hopefully that is the case. Um, I don't think we should take for granted because they done it last year and what they achieved last year means it's going to happen again. Um, it's been so long since an English team or any team has, has achieved trebles, never mind back-to-back -back trebles. So, yeah, um, if they win any competition this year, it's a huge achievement and I think we should just celebrate that rather than anticipate another treble. There's a lot of fans growing throughout the world now from Man City and recognise the achievements of the team and the manager and how big the club status is in, in the world of football and to bring the, the, the trophies. Um, yeah, the treble is, is special, but there's always a lot of love and appreciation for the trophies whenever we take them anywhere. So again, it's not something we or, or the club take for granted and regardless of it being one, two, three or four trophies, um, any appreciation from the fans is, is welcomed and it just gives an opportunity to give something back to fans that don't necessarily get a chance to, to go to the stadium. Yeah, I was lucky enough to, to achieve a lot of things in my career, things that I probably didn't anticipate growing up, but yeah, to, to win the Premier League and to win the FA Cup especially was a huge honour for me and to represent my country and to score a goal for, for England again is something you, you probably dream about as a kid and, and don't realise the the magnitude of that until you retire and yeah I was lucky enough to achieve more than I anticipated and grateful for the career I had. Um, yeah my life revolves around football whether it's working in the industry um, as a player as, as a coach as a pundit and also children that play the game my kids love to play so there's not a day or any kind of aspect of my life that doesn't involve football um, so yeah fortunate enough to do and enjoy the process of, of becoming a footballer and working in the industry that I've spent my majority of my life uh, being a part of and yeah my perspective has changed obviously uh, the game has evolved um, and I just appreciate watching it and as I said being recognised for things I've done in my playing career. What do you think? Do you think they'll do the treble again? I don't know. Katie, what do you think? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Right, Mark, we love having you on the show. 
and you're full of so much information. <laughs> but we Limited information. Well, OK, yeah, actually not too much information. <laughs> but we want to know about you. Uh, DXB in 60, we've got 60 seconds. I'm going to ask you some probing questions so we can learn more about Mark. All right, let's go. All right, we're going to have uh, you ready? 60 seconds. I was going to say 30 seconds kind of defeats the name of the game. We're going to have 60 seconds on the clock starting in three, two, one. Mark, if you weren't in the world of events, what would you be doing? Uh, probably a tennis coach. Oh, interesting. What has been your most favourite performance or event you've held at Coca-Cola Arena? Probably Alicia Keys' guest appearance with Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, I was there, Tony Robbins. OK, moving away from Coca-Cola Arena to yourself personally, what's your mm -hmm. most prized possession? Children, my children. You own them? I guess, yeah, yeah, I guess you do, half I of suppose. Them. Half yeah, of them. True. Yep. Um, do you have a hidden gem in Dubai? Tell us about that. Oh, it's got to be uh, the lakes. Oh, what, like, as in the lakes? Like, lovely. Yeah. Um, do you have an inspiration or a muse? Good one. <laughs> Probably music. Okay, yeah. but no one specific. No one specific. Okay. Depending on your mood, like a different soundtrack. 60 seconds, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is your life motto? 71%. What do you mean? What? As long as it makes sense, 71%, go for it. Do you know what? We're out of time, but I just, that's, that's amazing. We're going to be mulling that over for yeah. the rest of the night. 71%. Okay, yep. well, fine. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Genuinely, Mark, it's been so nice to have you back on. I know you're a friend of the show anyway. Um, next time, can you please come with some actual names and exclusives that you can talk to us about? We'll try. Camera <laughs> Mark. We will we'll discuss those Brian Adams tickets we just got. Right? We'll talk about. You didn't get them? Yeah, no. You, no, no, no. Yeah. Barry, Apparently sold out. Can you stop getting freebies on the show? <laughs> uh, well, certainly because it's sold out. Now, don't go anywhere because we have a phenomenal artist who's going to be playing on the show later tonight, right after this break. Don't go anywhere. Hi, my name is Jay Albert. I'm super excited to be performing in DXB today. And uh, just stay tuned and watch my performance. <laughs> 